Hello everybody, I hope you guys are all doing super duper swell. Lots changed here since we last spoke. A lot of things have been rearranged, a lot of things have been cleaned up, and there's been some minor projects completed. Let's go talk about the minor stuff real quick and we'll get back to some of the other stuff that's going on. Right, so things are starting to look a little different in this area. Of course, we have the shower here. Finally was able to go ahead and chamfer the edge on this piece here, which started to look pretty good. I do need to do a little bit of work on this side though, cleaning up some of these parts, which is why this isn't painted the same yellowy color here. So we're getting close to that. The last time we spoke, this was still an orange bit of Schluter curb. Now I have the stone on it. I did take somebody's advice and this is a piece of marble. And on the side here, we have the same matching piece of stone as that right there. So this is what the room had originally. This is the original baseboard in this room. So I figured I'd use it on the front. That being said, it does need a nice buff to really bring out its color again. One of the really major thing is the fact that this floor here used to look a lot like that spot right there. This is where a door used to be. In fact, this exact same door. So I was able to patch this area with the tiles from in there. Now, of course, they are not quite the exact same color, but there are also multiple colors of black here. There's a lot of ones that are reddish brown, some that are more true black, and now my own color. But when I go ahead and seal all of this, I think it'll all come together and look pretty good. And from afar, from a distance, honestly, you can't really tell. I think that's a pretty successful patch considering that's what it started out looking like. Smaller version of this, essentially. So that will meet the same fate. We'll be able to patch that all in. Although I did notice on this side, the borders are a slight different thickness. This is four tiles wide and that's only three. So how I'm gonna make that work, I don't know. There's probably gonna have to be a step down somewhere, but that'll be all right. It'll be a little reminder of the transition and where the door used to be. Now for the door itself, I've got it somewhat in. Honestly, there's just a clamp right here that's holding this door up. But I've got part of the framing in for the door, so this was the actual door frame. And I need to run the rest of it around. But of course, I also need to clean up the door a little bit more. This is all painted, it took forever to get the paint off and we're still not 100% there. Some of the stuff is really, really, really stubborn. And that's more or less it for the updates around here. But in the workshop, a lot more has changed. So this is what this area was looking like, and here's what it is now. And it's all looking much, much, much better. Right here, we used to have all of those chandeliers hanging up. This table saw was all, well, out to about here. <laughs> it's a really big table saw. And I've added this handy, super, super handy wood storage up here, which of course is being dominated by PVC pipe at the moment. Um, all of which will be needed eventually, but that was stuff left over from my plumbers. Uh, and there's quite a bit of it left over. Um, so eventually we'll, we'll get to be using that stuff. 
But for right now, it being up and out of the way is super duper helpful. Uh, so much of this stuff, this is all mansard roof pieces. This is all for the cornice, uh, the gutter box up there. Uh, this is a lathe bed, basically just lumber, lots and lots of lumber. Uh, but I was able to pull my toolbox out to a much more usable spot, which is good because I have so many little tools that I would love to go into this thing. But before I had so little access to it that it was difficult to get anything in there. The more access I have to it, the more I'll use it, the more things stop just hanging around, which is a problem. And over this way, we've got my workbench, all the corbels need to go up on the man's roof. Looking a bit dusty, but still extremely beautiful. So that's all the sets, everything that needs to go up on the mansard. Uh, some more spare wood, but all this stuff's old growth. We've got like pieces of oak and stuff in here. Um, who knows exactly how old it is, but it's actually off of this lathe bed. So I figured it's probably, I don't know, 100 years old. So probably lumber that's worth keeping. We've got my drill press, my buff wheel, my mortiser all hanging out over here where they were but again way more accessible now the really big thing here is that before this lathe was sitting way closer up here there were two lathe beds i completely refinished that one now with this space i have so much more room if i want to set up a pair of saw horses or something i can sand in this room i can get things dusty in here you know, that's all good and fine, and I can keep where the shower is and the vet clinic and the rest of the basement, our laundry room, everything way more dust free if I work here versus over there. <laughs> now to the lathe itself. I took up pinstriping, which I did on these machine legs. These were painted blue and terrible looking. I think they came out pretty well for my first time uh, actually pinstriping anything. It's been a while since I've done any fine art painting, and so my hand isn't quite as steady as it used to be. I'm sure I could train back up to it. But other than the legs, I also replaced all the hardware on this lathe bed. I, I had to completely sand and refinish this lathe bed as well because it was painted a very bright blue, which if you look hard in spots, Bits of it still remain. There's that true blue there. Um, but I wasn't trying to get it perfect, just usable, because when you have paint on something like this, it makes this surface up here, this top surface, very sticky, uh, which means it's very hard for these things to slide around and move, and I need them to move. And of course, this is a Holland Brown machine, one of the nicer ones I own, one of the cleaner ones, and it will be very usable very soon, which I'll be quite happy with. So I have some spindle work to do on the staircase and a bunch of decorative items that I want to replace here in the house that really need this tool right here. And this is one that's small enough and light enough and easy enough to get into the basement where I can actually utilize it here without having to build a much larger shop or take up space in the garage that I wouldn't need to. Now this one of course doesn't have any power to it at the moment, this is a line shaft or flat belt driven machine. <clears throat> you can see this is what's called a step pulley here. This is basically your speed control. There's the other half to it here. You can see down here at the bottom. Now this, at a later date, I will attach to the ceiling and hook a motor up to it and the belt will run down between the two step pulleys. And that's how this machine will work. Now over here I've got some of the other lathe accessories that I have. Um, you know, different tool rests, different plates. Uh, a lot of these are the locking mechanisms. I 
if more tool rests up here as well. So, more or less, I've got everything this lathe would ever need as far as tool rests and everything else are concerned. So, pretty happy that I have a more or less complete tool that's well over a century old. That again, I can't stress enough, was made by the guy who originally built this house. <laughs> again, this is the Charles S. Brown house. That is the Brown of Holland Brown. So I can't wait to put parts of his house back together with his lathe. Undoubtedly, in some small way, when this machine was sold originally, it paid for part of this house. And now, in a weird way, a century later, it's going to be paying for it in another way, once again. It's also been some great news about the Manson Roof this week. I got to spend a day with Eric this week, and we made some progress on the smaller sunburst that goes above the smaller dormer. So this guy's little brother. It was really cool to go over there and see a lot of Eric's machines in action. We got to use one of his definitely more impressive and, and terrifying machines, which, which is his Shaper. I think full on sounds like a helicopter about to take off and it pushes just about as much wind as well. <laughs> The blades that are on that thing coming off of it are about about a, three inches. So, I mean, if you were to get anywhere near that blade, <laughs> uh, it'd take part of you. But it's what's needed to make things like these sunbursts. What you saw us making there were these rays like this. And these were made the same way on that same shaper doing the exact same thing. And on the bandsaw itself, we were just cutting the tapers. Next week, I want to get a more full explanation for you guys from Eric himself on exactly what we're doing here, what we're making when we're working on these machines, or well, more or less what he's doing and what he's explaining to me because he has to explain it to me as well because I don't, I, I couldn't build this if I wanted to. I, I don't quite understand it fully, although after this week, I understand it a lot better than I did and I could probably get halfway to this. So that's going to be the end of this episode, guys. One thing you might have noticed throughout this episode is there is a big, huge lack of time lapses. And the main reason for that is I've not felt like filming this, well, really this last month. It's kind of been a drag. Um, for those of you who see my posts, I lost my grandmother at the beginning of this month, of, of the beginning of February. So because of factors like that, I have been spending a bit more time with my family, um, of course. But of course, that doesn't mean I haven't still been working on this place. Uh, but the part that I haven't been doing is setting up the camera. Uh, working on this place for me is never hard. This is the easy part. You know, in a lot of ways, working here, doing these things is therapy for me. It's extremely therapeutic. Uh, as I clean things up, as I, as I fix things, um, you know, I guess I, you could say I fix things within myself. You know, it's a lot of a time alone to just kind of, uh, sit and think and whittle on things, if you will. And, uh, little by little things start to look better. And they feel better. And of course that makes me feel better. <laughs> but that isn't always the case when it comes to picking up the camera and talking to you guys or setting up a time lapse or explaining what I'm doing. And I know I have to be better about that in general. But these last few weeks, that hasn't been the easiest thing on me. It's one of the main reasons I've been cleaning so much this week. I needed the, the fresh start, the, the, the clean slate, to really uh, get back to what's really important here. So I promise next week we'll be getting back to more of a typical format. 
but this season I want to start to stress the real explanations behind exactly what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it. More or less what I'm saying is I want to show more and tell less. But of course, we'll see how that all goes. But as always, thank you guys. I think we're gonna have a very good season here, a very good year here. Lots of projects coming up, lots of changes per usual. And you know, I think if the dominoes fall into place as I think they're going to, I think we're going to have, start seeing a lot more rapid progression. Well, these last three years have really just been setting up a foundation to be able to stand on. Um, so many, so much time, effort, and money has gone into things that nobody will ever see, like plumbing, like electrical, like, well, systems. It's just systems. Um, but now that we're starting to round the corner on some of these systems, that uh, means things can start going more rapidly. And if I can get a lot of these machines set up, that means a lot of other things start going more rapidly. I don't have to order parts years out because I can make them myself. So it shortens the time frame on things like windows, doors, all these other facets, all these other pieces of the house that I still need that I don't have yet, I can just make them myself. Things move faster when I get to control the timeline. So, so I hope nobody thinks of the machine so much as a distraction because they're really a solution to so many of the problems I have here at this house. And hopefully the solution in the future to other people's problems that they have with their house. Because post this, I'd really like to fix as many places as I can in St. Louis before I'm done. And I don't mean my projects, I mean other people's. So thank you guys as always, and I will see you guys again next week. Until then, take care, bye-bye.